Hello, welcome back to this video tutorial series on the use and features of the idf to ph toolkit. Uh, my name is Ed May with Building Type, and um, glad to have you back. Um, in this video, I am going to go a little bit in depth on the domestic hot water system options. So, if you have been following along with this video series, you hopefully have. Um, something like what you see on the screen here, where I have a simple Rhino box model of a silly little building with just a few windows, a few walls, a few rooms inside. Uh, and we have the data from that Rhino model successfully streaming or passing through our Grasshopper definition, uh, creating an Energy Plus file, and at the same time streaming out to our PHPP, our Pass Plus Planning Package file. Uh, and again, if you have been following along, hopefully you're you're pretty close to where I am here, where you've built out the geometry and assigned some parameters and fleshed out the windows and shading factors. Um, we've created our interior rooms and assigned all ventilation flow rates. We've uh, calibrated the Energy Plus model so it sort of more closely matches the uh, average values that you find in the PHPP so that we can get reasonably good alignment between the two modeling protocols or modeling uh, tools there. Um, and, and of course, we uh, are, are successfully writing out our IDF file and, and then bringing it back into our um, into our PHPP. So uh, as I said, in this in this video, the next thing that we really want to dive into here to start adding some some detail to our model uh, is to take a look at some of the domestic hot water or DHW components that we have built into the IDF to PH toolkit and see see how you might deploy those to fill in the domestic hot water elements on the PHPP. So before we um, dive into the Rhino and the Grasshopper side, let's take a look at the PHPP in a little bit of depth and we will um, uh, see what sort of inputs we're going to be asked to provide uh, before we before we look at the, the tools that we have to allow us to do that. So. Let's take a look at our PHPP, which I have down here in the, the lower section of my screen here, the PHPP Excel model. You can see we're, we're streaming our, our, our data out from, from Grasshopper. And if we take a look here, I'll just maximize this so we can see a little better. You can see we have our verification worksheet page. We're getting good results for our uh, 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 heating demand, heating load, uh, frequency of overheating. Uh, we've got our, our air tightness test successfully writing through there. Um, and so this all seems to be working properly. So let's take a look at the uh, domestic hot water section. If I scroll over on the bottom uh, in the tabs here, I'll go to the DHW and distribution, and we'll take a look at that worksheet. Let me scroll up to the top here. And you'll see here that this worksheet is a big worksheet, a lot, um, a lot here. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see a little bit better. There's a lot here that we are asked to input, um, but it's basically broken up into some pretty reasonably simple sections. So we have our, our sort of top panel here, which is going to be where we'll enter information around space heat distribution. So if we had a hydronic heating system, with radiators or the like, we could enter some information here for the, the space heat distribution piping and insulation. This is primarily going to affect our internal uh, uh, comfort when it comes to overheating risk in the summertime um, or shoulder seasons, uh, but of course um, uh, energy consumption as well. Um, if we uh, scroll down a little bit, you'll find a, another panel here for what's called domestic hot water useful heat. Um, this is going to be the section where we would enter in uh, um, uh, values for usage. So, so how much hot water are our occupants using? Um, we'll, we'll take a look at the, the entry values or entry options for that there. Um, you can see here there are a couple of other rollouts. So down on line 83 and line 85, there are a couple of um, expandable rollouts. If we were to press this little plus button here, we would you know, see some, some additional elements here. Um, and this is primarily for non-residential or more detailed residential. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shrink that back down. Um, we won't be looking at that here today, but there, there are some more entries there if you, if, you're, if you need to or want to enter in any any information there. Um, the, the part where we're going to spend a lot most of our time working on here is going to be on the domestic hot water distribution side. We're obviously going to have a lot of values here that we're going to want to input, um, both for uh, uh, recirculation pipes, which is this initial block up at the top here, and then individual branch pipes, which is the block at the lower, lower element here. Um, 
So uh, quite a few inputs, quite a few options that we can set here. So we'll take a look at how we, we uh, fill those in. And then the last element here that we'll take a look at in this video will be the domestic hot water storage tanks, which will be all of the elements down here. You can see um, the PHPP allows us to enter up to three distinct storage tanks. So, so two basic tanks and then one buffer tank if we're doing something like a solar thermal system or, or the like. So quite a bit of, of options here, uh, quite a bit of, of um, different inputs. We'll take a look at, at how we have uh, set up the IDF to pH components to, to basically write out a lot of defaults here, but of course you'll be able to set up the, the elements here um, as explicit values or, or set any of these components uh, however you like as we, as we uh, get into this. All right, so, so we have a sense now of what the PHPP is looking for. So let's go back to our grasshopper scene and take a look at how we're going to build that out in our in our, our rhino grasshopper model. So here's my grasshopper model. Let me maximize this so we can get a, a better view here. Uh, and again, if you have been following along, hopefully yours looks something similar to this. We uh, On the left here, you can see we create our our honeybee zones, our basic geometry. We add some windows, we calculate the shading factors, we build out our interior rooms and set all of our ventilation flow rates. So here's where we set our envelope air tightness. We set up our fresh air ventilation system, and then we export out to Energy Plus. Then we convert that Energy Plus model into a successful PHPP, and then we stream all of that information out to our, our Excel PHPP document. So pretty straightforward, um, uh, uh, relatively modular. You can sort of add and subtract these these pieces um, to make uh, models of greater or or lesser complexity. Obviously, um, so we're going to add we're going to add a little bit more complexity here. So we have to decide where we're going to where we're going to slide in our domestic hot water system. Uh, our domestic hot water system is going to work very similar to our fresh air ventilation system. We're going to build the system, and then we're going to apply the system to one or more zones in our model. Very similar to the fresh air system, it may be the case that you have a multi-zone or a complex model where you have more than one domestic hot water system operational. And it may also be the case that you have a multi-zone uh, Energy Plus model where all of those zones are served by the same system. So maybe you have a you know townhouse or a you know a north-south separation on a you know a glassy house or something, and so you have a north zone and a south zone for your energy model, um, but it's actually one building or one one uh, model uh, or one uh, space and so it's got one system so um, a lot of flexibility there you can sort of set it up however you need uh, but the, the the general idea is that we'll build a system and then we'll apply the system to that zone so let's uh, let's make ourselves some room here and let's start building out our zone so I'm gonna actually make us some room here uh, in between the fresh air ventilation system and the export to Energy Plus. So once we're done with all of our fresh air systems, now we're gonna uh, apply a domestic hot water system. Uh, but again, you could sort of put it almost anywhere in this chain, um, it doesn't uh, really matter. But we'll, we'll put it here towards the end, we'll kind of keep all of our system stuff together. So let me make us a little bit more room here for our domestic hot water. And I'll come in here and set up our set up our scene. So let me just give us a little a quick heading here and we'll call this um, domestic hot water, oops, domestic hot water system. And again, this project is a, a little bit simplified. You know, we're just showing just a, uh, shrink this a little bit, we're showing just a simple, simple single zone honeybee model here. Obviously in real life, you'd probably have more than one zone and, and a much more complicated building. Um, so again, this can sort of um, uh, scale out or accordion out to whatever level of complexity you need, but we'll show it here for a very simple, for a very simple building. So we have, as you can see here, we have our honeybee zones flowing through. And so what we're going to want to do is grab those honeybee zones and then apply a new domestic hot water system to them after we've built it. So we'll come up here to our O1 model. So this is again in the building type rollout in the um, uh, grasshopper tools. We'll come into the O1 model. And we'll come down to the lower section here, and you can see we have a little section here dedicated to um, domestic hot water. So we have things like branch piping domestic hot water systems, usage profiles, domestic hot water tanks, and recirculation piping. So a couple different types of piping, recirc and branch, we'll sort of take a look at those as we get a little bit further here. But to start with, let's just drop a domestic hot water system onto the canvas, and we'll make sure that everything's hooked up properly here. So I'm going to grab a domestic hot water system, and I'll just drop it onto the canvas here. 
Now if we zoom in and take a look at some of the inputs here, uh, what do we have? So we have a system name. Now the system name is going to be really important as you start having multi-zone or multiple system um, models. So if you have a complicated model where you have a where you have multiple dwelling units or you have a residential tower above a commercial podium or something like that, you're probably going to have more than one system. And in that case, the system name becomes really important. It's important to categorize the systems and keep them separate from one another. So you won't want a unique name for each system in that case. Notice also we have the Honeybee Zones input and a Honeybee Zones output. Uh, and this is another one of these pass-through uh, components where we're going to take in the Honeybee Zones, we're going to perform some modification on the zones, and then we're going to uh, um, uh, pass the zones along uh, with those modifications. So in this case, we're going to uh, we're going to add some domestic hot water system information to our um, to to our honeybee zones here. Now, by default, we can take a look at what we're getting by default, uh, and we are going to get um, basically nothing. So you can see here, we are building successfully a domestic hot water system. So it is a domestic hot water system, but it has almost no information. So notice here we get a lot of nuns and a lot of empty lists, a lot of empty information. This is a, this is a sort of valid component so we can pass it along, um, but it's not going to give us any information. So if I was to take this and hook this up, so I'll take my honeybee zones from the previous component. So in this case it's the set zone ventilation. I'll take this honeybee zones output and hook it up to the honeybee zones input. And I'm then going to pass the honeybee zones output to the next element in the chain. So I'm going to replace this connection with my honeybee zones output here. Now, at this point, if we were to go back to our PHPP and take a look at what had got what has been written, so let me open up our PHPP again. Notice nothing has really been done here. Oh, there's one. We we did set the temperature, so that's one default um, default element which is going to come in, but the rest of this is all blank. So nothing has been added to our PHPP, and that is to go back to our grasshopper here again because our domestic hot water system is essentially blank. Um, uh, there's there's no information here, so there's there's nothing to to write out. So our next step here is to start to add some information. So let's add uh, let's add an element here so that we can see that this thing is is passing uh, is passing along properly. So um, let me delete this uh, out, and so we know it's working. We know it's linked up. We know it's connecting. Um, let me give this a name. So I'll call this as domestic hot water system. Uh, maybe you would call it first floor system, or maybe you would call it residential tower system, or commercial podium system, or you know whatever. Um, but it, somehow you gotta, you would want to give it a, a unique name here for this to work properly. Okay, so we'll give it a system, uh, a system name. So that's all working properly now. And now we can take a look at some of our other inputs here. So we could choose to input a usage profile. That's fine if we want to override the default. We could put in a different design forward temperature if we wanted to override the default, 60 degrees Celsius. And then we have the option to input circulation piping, branch piping, and a couple of domestic hot water tanks, as well as a buffer tank if we're doing something like a solar thermal system. So for now, let's just enter a tank. A tank will be the simplest element that we can add, and then we'll come back in maybe a future video and we will um, take a look at circulation piping and branch piping. Those are going to uh, be a little bit more complicated, take a few more minutes for us to go through. So let's just add a, a simple element here. Let's add a tank to our scene. So let me zoom out a little bit, give us a little bit of room, and I'll come up here to 01 model in the building type rollout, and I'll come down to uh, domestic hot water tank. So I'm going to come down here to the tank object and I'll grab the tank and I'll drop it onto our canvas. So I now have a, a domestic hot water tank. So what are we getting by default from this domestic hot water tank? Well, we were getting a tank. It has a heat loss rate, it has a volume, has a standby fraction, it's got a location, it knows it's inside, but it is a, a zero. It's a, it's a no storage tank. So again, if we go back to our uh, PHPP, and we scroll down to the tank section. Notice that our options here for the type of tank are zero, uh, no storage tank, a uh, number one, which is a domestic hot water and heating tank. So if we have a hydronic system where we have a tank which is going to supply hot water to radiators or the like, we have a domestic hot water and heating, or we have more common for a lot of the projects we're working on now, dedicated domestic hot water tanks. So not coupled to the heating system, 
just for the domestic hot water. So three different options here. Um, and uh, uh, by default, we, we do get some tank properties. And so if we were to hook this up right now, the properties would flow through. So for instance, if I was to take this storage tank object output and connect it to one either one of my tank inputs, doesn't really matter, either one, we'll connect it to tank one, that should flow through, but we're not going to get any actual information here. So notice it is properly flowing through. So we're getting our, our size, our heat loss rate, our standby fraction, the location, all of that is getting set properly. But because it's set to a zero or no storage tank, it's not going to actually affect the performance model at all. So the only thing we need to do here in order to set this to work properly is to set this to some other value. So let's say we set it to two, type number two. And remember type number two, if I hover over here, type number two is a dedicated domestic hot water tank. So in our project here, we're gonna, let's say for purposes of argument that we'll use something like direct electric heating or heat pump heating, you know, electric heating of some sort. And so we're gonna have a dedicated domestic hot water tank. It's not gonna be coupled to our heating system. So all I need to do is just say that this is a type number two tank. And notice down here now we get number two, domestic hot water only. And if I open up our PHPP and uh, zoom out a little bit, notice now, here's our storage tank section. Notice now we're actually getting some results. So we're now getting some heat loss associated with that storage tank. And if we were to build out a second tank or a buffer tank, or we were to choo change any of those values, the heat loss rate, the volume, any of that kind of stuff, um, this heat loss, um, this total energy loss number per year would change uh, uh, as well. So we've successfully hooked up our domestic hot water system here. We have a tank functioning. We could set some of the properties. We could set any of these properties if we wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and leave them at the default for now. Uh, and then in uh, the next video, we'll come back and we will take a look at some of the piping objects that we can use. So we'll take a look at circulation piping, and then we'll take a look at branch piping as well. So we'll uh, come back in the next video and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how we flesh out the rest of our domestic hot water system here. All right, hope to see you in the next video.